This is Trucks and Tractor Power, and today from Florida Sports Park in Naples, we bring you the Gator NPPA Nationals. The semis make their debut on Trucks and Tractor Power. This represents the newest division in NTPA pulling. You'll see manufacturers like Kenworth, International, Mack, Peterbilt, under the hood, Cummins and Detroit Diesel. Now, this is a 1995 Kenworth from Metzger and Sons Trucking out of Silver Lake, Indiana. This is the rig that goes down the highway, and right over here is their puller, a 1976 International. It is stock appearing. However, there's no CB in there and no logbook. Here with more on this pulling division is Army Armstrong. Gary, what you're looking at is the Cummings Diesel Block. Over 1,100 cubic inches. It's in the Super Trooper we're going to be watching today. And this particular engine, yes, did come out in this truck when it was manufactured, but you can't buy it in this truck anymore because it's only available in heavy equipment like you see in coal mines. One of the unique things about the engine, it runs a twin turbo. Now, keep in mind, a turbo's responsibility is to pump more air and more fuel into an engine. 25 pounds of boost is normal what you get on a road tractor, okay? This particular road tractor we're looking at, at this particular point, when it goes to the second turbo, has over 125 pounds of boost, five times that of the normal road tractor. Come on back here with me. I'm going to show you something else to prove to you that, yes, it indeed it does have a fifth wheel. There's a fifth wheel that normally pulls the weight. But in this case, the fifth wheel is hooked onto the main hook that will be pulling the weight transfer sled. But something I really found interesting is the fact that even though these vehicles weigh 20,000 pounds, that's what the class minimum requirement is, they still have to hang weight on them. But where do they hang their weight? Someplace nobody else will hang their weight on the very back of the vehicle. The reason is very simple. A road tractor makes a different kind of horsepower. You're not going to see a lot of wheel speed and zooming it out the other end. These guys make what they call torque horsepower, down around three and 4,000 RPM, kind of like an interior lineman on a football team. These are the guys that get down and get dirty. All they want to do is plant this tire in the track. They don't want to zoom it out the other end. They literally want to muscle it out the end. You know, I kind of like to look at these guys and figure what we're looking at here are the sumo wrestlers of pulling, because these are the heavyweights. Well, Army, speaking of heavyweights, the sled will weigh about 42,500 pounds. A full pull here at Florida Sports Park, 300 feet. And before we get underway with the uh, pulling competition, let's take a look at what it's like in the cockpit of one of these big rigs. Hey, Gary, come over to Tornado. I want to take you inside Gaylin Hoover's office and show you what it's all about. First of all, I want you to look at the floor. Yeah, you got three pedals, just like a tractor-trailer rig. Normally, this is the clutch. That's not the case now. This is the brake, the air brake that operates the rear drive wheel on the left side when the front end gets up. This particular brake, normal brake, operates the right drive wheel when the front end gets up. So you actually steer the vehicle with your foot. The gas pedal is in the same location as a normal gas pedal. you got a safety strap across that in case your foot may slide off. But I want you to come up on the dash and look at all these gauges. They run two tachometers so they can monitor this engine. The water temperature is so critical, they have three gauges for that. Also, there's an air pressure gauge that sits right on top of all the other gauges that monitors the B bottom of the engine and the T top of the engine. You can see those gauges. Then you come across and you see an automatic transmission shifter. Now, normally this truck comes with a straight shift, but that's not the case now. What they've done, they put an automatic Allison transmission in here, similar to the transmissions in the Greyhound bus, because they find that that'll hold the horsepower a lot better. Then you come on around to your right side again, you see all type of air pressure gauges, oil temperature gauges, and what have you. So air is so, so very important in this sport because you got to remember, air makes horsepower. And this thing runs four turbochargers and two superchargers. That's enough horsepower to lift the Columbia, I believe. But what they let me do for explaining this to you, they're going to let me do something I've always wanted to do. I get to blow the horn. And of course, it's an air horn, Army. Hey, that shows you were listening. Uh, that's Gary, the only you. reason you did that, so you could blow that horn. OK, we're ready for the competition. Now, the Lady Butterfly, look at the grill on John Mann's vehicle. Man driving the 1974 Kenworth with the Detroit diesel. Two turbos. This is a V12 diesel with two turbos. A completely different kind of horsepower than we're used to seeing. A low torque horsepower. Watch the rear wheels. Not two of them. He's got eight of them. He's trying to get the horsepower to the ground. You notice how they're starting to bump a little bit. The butterfly on the front. Kind of like the iron butterfly. A little in a god of the bees. I knew it. I knew it. Somehow you get that in there. My favorite rock and roll. Time, folks. Look at the black smoke. The crowd loves it. 
Well, he's a little short. I don't think John Mann liked it. Couldn't pull it out of there at 9, 293.07. So we'll take this break and come back with more from Naples. Got an eating? Welcome back to Trucks and Tractor Power here at Florida Sports Park in Naples for the Gator NTPA Nationals, a part of the Copenhagen Skull pulling circuit. And next to hook up will be Mike Friedline in his rig he calls Going Big Time. He's out of Somerset, Pennsylvania. You know, it's amazing uh, how this sport is growing. I was talking to Mike earlier, and he told me that he has over 40 dates this year and had to turn down a whole lot of them. He just can't go as many places as people want to see him. Again, look at the smoke. When it goes black, Gary, you know what's going to happen. And this is a 1991 Marmon, the only Marmon we have here this afternoon. I knew that. I, I know you did. No idea what a Marmon is either. <laughs> Let's see what's going to happen. Keep an eye on the smoke. Again, the crowd really, hey, you're on board. Taking this is a ride. The, uh, this is the sled cam, and he is going to fall well short of what he needs. Look at the chatter with the rear axles. He's digging a hole. I would not want to be the next guy in line trying to go down that path. 190.40. 190.40. So over 100 feet short of the full pull, but he certainly digs himself a ditch well, in the he, sand. Well, he did it. Well, and he, he messed up the track for the guy behind him, but, you know, you get this far away from home, you got to go for it. Uh, speaking of this far away from home, let me make a saying. If you got it, a truck brought it. That's what these guys that tell you. Look at all the stacks. It's just amazing the popularity these big rigs have, not with adults, but children too, Gary. Yeah, but who has not seen a big rig going down the highway? Here he is from Alden, Minnesota. This is Ground Wolf. Norm Lawson, the uh, 92 International Harvester. 1993 NTPA points champion, so uh, this guy's got to be a player. Yeah, he was third last year in points and nearly 20 years in the business. Let's see what he can do with the, the Ground Wolf. Listen to the sound. The people love it. Well, those turbos are sucking some air. Look at that. Coming at you, Gary. Good pull so far. Norm Lawson. Just, oh, ever so. Did he pull it out? Yeah, he did. Right. He got it out of there. From this one angle, I could not tell, but certainly the sled now is in front of that marker. Yes. 300 feet, a full pull. Watch again. Now you got two drive axles in the rear. Keep an eye on them. You notice neither one is acting that much different than the other one. He's kind of figured this thing out. He's got the ground speed. He's got the weight moving now, but the weight sled comes up on him, Gary. Yeah, but he had the horsepower. He had the horsepower hooked up right there. He pulls it out. Oh, uh, yes, he gets it by there. Let's go trackside and talk to Norm Larson. Well, Norma, my friend, you're showing it can be done, but how many guys behind it can do the same thing? Yeah, there's a couple of them that are pretty risky there. They could, it could easily happen again. I, this is my track. Pretty risky. That sounds like a good truck name. We ought to have a truck, Gary, and you ought to drive it. Pretty risky. The biggest problem we'd have is what name we'd put on the truck. <laughs> All right, the hookup now for Mike Metzger in the Liberty Bell. This truck at one time hurled, held the world's land speed record at the Bonneville Salt Flats. Yeah, there was like 160-something back in the mid-70s they traveled with this truck. I don't know. It just came past me and went, zoom. You were there. I was there. Yeah. And it's Bonneville. I know you're going to make fun of the way I talk. <laughs> you're from Kentucky, though. I can't help it. He went fast. Is the name of the game. <laughs> well, this truck has also seen the oval track truck competition at places like Dover, Delaware, Rockingham, Phoenix. So this truck has certainly been around the block a few times. Yeah, other than that, it's just an old truck, like passing the highway. Look at the black smoke. Look at here, the, cr the crowd's watching. The crowd's going to get in, and he's making horsepower. He's taking it to the other end. 300 he's feet. take it out? Yes. Yes, he does. Mike Pester. This is a father-son team. His son, Dan, will be out a bit later in competition. Mike takes it out for a full pull, so uh, he will come back for more competition. There's a look into the cockpit as we go down trackside and talk to Mike. Mike, have you guys found a groove out there? The man in front of you goes through, you line up the same tracks, you're taking it out. Is that going to be the pattern for the rest of the day? I think so. Uh, hey, he got it out going down that track, so I thought uh, if it worked for him, hopefully it worked for me. And you're going to see him in the pull-off. Uh, good luck to you. Yeah, thank you. 
monkey see, monkey do. And now coming up, this is son Dan. Uh, father and son have a trucking uh, firm out of Silver Lake, Indiana. They have about uh, 20, 25 of these big rigs on the highway. This is the uh, Super Trooper. This, in fact, this rig has been upside down three or four times in oval track competition. It's amazing how these things have histories behind them. We can write a book on it. We can do a, we need to do a home video about trucks. Here we go. Let's see what the kid's going to do. Daddy put it on the other end. Junior's going after it. A little bit of wheel hop right there at about the 75 foot mark. He's got the ground speed, but he's not making a horsepower. You notice the smoke is not as black as it was on his father's run, Gary. This is the 1980 Kenworth, and he is going to come up a bit short. Well, the distance for that pull, a 289.40. So for uh, Dan, his day is over as a competitive driver. He'll become a crew member now for his dad. We'll come back with more pulling from Naples, Florida. Stay with us. Welcome back to Naples, Florida. Our final competitor trying to make it to the pull-off will be Galen Hoover in the Tornado. Now, this is out of the uh, Smith Transport uh, Company. They hail from Pennsylvania. Like two, what, 300 of these uh, rigs yeah, across the highway? 300 rigs on the road uh, running product all over the world. But right now, he's just trying to run 300 feet down some sandy, sandy this sand. This product that he's uh, pulling with about 42,500 pounds of dead weight. Rolling off that start line is so important. Remember, he's got eight wheels. He's trying to get moving. Okay, he's got the ground speed going. Dow's a horsepower in. You talk about making some horsepower. This Detroit diesel is heading south. One turbos, and he's going to pull it out the end. We're going to have a three-way pull-off. There's a full pull. So Galen Hoover joins two others for the pull-off. He went about 20 feet past the 300 feet mark, Gary. Oh, man, that truck has been so dominant wherever it goes. As we take a look at the guys in the pull-off, Norm, Mike, and Galen, a three-way pull-off. Well, Gary, we got three of them going into a pull-off. This is going to be the third, the last of the three Amigos in this pull-off thing today. Not really a horsepower track, more of a driver's track today, isn't it? No, well, you got to take it easy coming out and then nail the horsepower to the ground. We had a really good run. So you're adding horsepower all the way through. You just have to know when to call on it. You got to know when to put it to it. The takes a little bit of experience to get her moving. So I feel we did pretty good today. Well, there's three of you going back to the line. Let's see how it works out. Good luck to you. Thank you, Army. All right, they've added weight now to the sled, and the first driver with the flip of the coin to hook up will be Norm Larson in the ground wolf. You know, Gary, people don't realize this is one of the most dangerous part of the pulling sport right here. Can you see why? I'm going to tell you, there's a young man standing between the sled and the pulling vehicle. He hooks the main chain up. You saw him do that. And he also hooks a kill switch up. That's in case that chain breaks. That kill switch will shut the vehicle off. The drivers of the vehicles are very aware of where that man is, and they will not move until they can actually physically see him. They will not take anybody's word for where he is. They have to see the hook man with their own eyes. Well, Norm knows how to win the 93 points champion big rig uh, competition. He was third in 94. He spent nearly 20 years in pulling. Comes out of Minneapolis. Left front wheel is up a little bit. He's got a good balanced run going for him. Whoa, just went away real quick, Gary. Yeah, he had a good ride going for a while, and it stopped suddenly at 258.09. 258.09. The first of our three pullers in the pull-off here at Florida Sports Park in Naples. Take a look again as he hooks it up. Watch the front of the sled. See, he, he physically yanks the front of the sled off the ground. That allows him to get going. But when the sled settles back down on him, watch what happens to the front end of his vehicle. Now the sled is pulling the front end of his vehicle up. It's a balancing act. It's like a tightrope walker. Yeah, so once again, the other two in the competition will certainly be watching this run, maybe making some weight adjustment to their rig. All right, let's go back trackside now and talk to Norm. Norm, it's something seemed to let go in the truck. You were making horsepower all the way through, and all of a sudden, bam, like something happened. Do you have any idea? Oh, I think we uh, we lost the rear end there. I jumped out of gear. I think it's okay again now, but something ain't holding it in gear like it should be. We'll get a look at it. Second up will be Mike Metzger in the Liberty Bell. He's out of Indiana, Silver Lake, Indiana. Now, this thing has done so many things. If you told me that he drove this truck to his high school prom, Along with all the other cops, well, I will not believe you. He didn't. Okay. Yeah. His son did. He didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't own this truck when he was in high school. But I tell you, this is a legendary truck for sure. And let's see if he can put it in the winter circle here at Florida Sports Park in Naples, Florida. 
He's got second a good combatant run. in the full pole. He's got a good run going, and this guy knows it because this is who he's going after. Well, it looks like he's beating him for sure. Yeah, he's well past what Norm turned in at 285-01, which puts Mike Metzger in the lead. 285-01. Mike beats Storm and Norman. Now we got one more puller to go. Yeah, and the last one will be uh, Galen Hoover as we take a look now at the replay of this run by Mike Metzger. What's so unique, Gary, is you have two axles back here, eight tires you're trying to coordinate. It, it is a big balancing act. But the bottom line is that sled's going to get heavier every inch you go down the track. That well, was a good ride for Mike at 285-01. So this truck has been competitive at any level, whether it be the Bonneville Salt Flats on the high banks of Dover, Delaware, or here in the sand at Naples, uh, Florida Sports Park. So he's made his way back to the pit area. And Army, you work your way over to him. Well, Norm told us he had a rear end let go. You're the man sitting on top of this thing right now. You got one bullet to dodge. Can you do it? That's a big bullet that's coming up there, but uh, I made a good run. He's going to have to get right with it to beat that. I, I did all I could do. We're going to be keeping an eye on you on this run. Hope it holds up for you. I, I hope so. I'd like to have a win here for Chase. Galen Hoover, our last combat coming up. Stay with us as we come back to Florida Sports Park. We are ready for our final combatant here in our pull-off at Florida Sports Park here in Naples in the Tornado. This is Galen Hoover out of Hollisdayburg, Pennsylvania. This is the Kenworth with the quad turbos and dual superchargers. Yeah, I just figured this out. With all that air he's pumping through that engine, he can feel a good year blimp up by 30 seconds, I would <laughs> well, imagine. The other two participants in our pull-off looking on right now, Metzger is the guy to beat at 285-01. This Tornado has been virtually untouchable in competition. Yeah, Galen and his crew have done such a, gr a great job. These are all, I had a chance to meet them. They're really quality young men. They represent the Smith Transportation people in a positive manner. They're sponsored the Detroit Diesel gets the exposure they want. But right now, this kid is going for broke. Here we have three guys with full pulls earlier. He has to go better than 285-01. The chassis unloading on him on the rear. The horsepower's there, but the chassis doesn't work for him. And I think he falls. Uh, we'll wait. Yes, 281-04. He falls about five feet short. And that means that Mike Metzger wins it here at Naples at 285-01. Your final standings with Metzger beating Hoover, Larson, Mann, and his son, Dan Metzger. So let's go down and talk to our victor. We got into a pretty good bounce there. Mike did a heck of a job. It's about, it's about what the, you know, th this seems to be one of the fastest growing type sports out here. The crowd loves these things. How, how come they do? I know you guys are competitors. It's over now. But why do the people find these trucks so interesting? I don't know. It's, you know, you see a lot of them on the road. It's just a lot like a fire truck. Every kid likes a fire truck, and they're, they're nice looking. Something they can relate to. They see them on the road every day. Hopefully, it makes a little better relationship uh, with the trucks and, and cars, but it seems to help. But everyone seems to like the trucks. I don't, I'm not sure why they do, but it just gets better each year. You know, one of the things, you're, you're sponsored, the Smith people. Tremendous uh, involved in the trucking industry and everything. This has got to be good, uh, good for them, good for your sponsors. You guys can bring a whole lot to the table for people that support you, can't you? Yeah, we have 300 trucks on the road, and we get a lot of drivers through that, and uh, they really appreciate it. So anytime the people across the country, they're watching a TV show, see a Smith truck, they just need to honk their horn and wave at them. Might just be you. It might just be. Well, Army, let me digest this with the popularity of semis and, as mentioned, fire trucks. Could we see fire trucks in pulling competition in the years to come? Uh, I'm going to have a big yellow school bus ready this time <laughs> next year. This is a great sport. I'm glad to see these guys get some exposure on national television. Or a dump truck or whatever. Well, our congratulations to Mike Metzger for Army Armstrong. I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Now here's news of an exciting video release from Diamond P Sports. What could follow the three volumes of Diamond Peas and they walked away series? A fourth, and they walked away four like its predecessors captures the most perilous moments in recent motorsports history. Unmerciful doubles, unbelievable flips, falls, and fires, and in every harrowing incident, the driver beats the odds. Once again, man and machine test their metal through mayhem in over a dozen motorsports disciplines.
You can't find this video in stores. You can't rent it. And anyone who has it won't let you beg, borrow, or steal it. Then how do you get your own copy of And They Walked Away For? Call 1-800-652-8686. Or send $24.95 plus $4 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. 1-800-652-8686. Or charge it on your Visa, MasterCard, or Discover card. Call 1-800-652-8686. 1-800-652-8686. Or charge it on your Visa, MasterCard, or Discover card.